So after spending more than 1,000 days in prison, a prominent Saudi women's rights activist has been released and is back home. So Ian Lee is in London, has been following that story as well as other stories from around the globe. Ian, what can you tell us? Good morning, Amory. I can tell you people are celebrating her release. Twitter lit up with the news. Now, people are sharing this picture of the 31-year-old showing her smiling from ear to ear. Lujain El Hathloul had spent more than a thousand days in prison. She was arrested in a 2018 roundup of opponents of a Saudi Arabian law banning women from driving. And critics described her detention as politically motivated, with the UN and rights groups also condemning her arrest. During her time in prison, she says she was tortured and sexually abused, which Saudi officials deny. And just last December, a special terror court had sentenced her to almost six years in prison. Her release coincides with a call by the White House for the kingdom to release political prisoners, including women's rights activists. Next, we are in Japan, where the country's Olympic chief has stepped down after sexist remarks he made about women were leaked to the media last week. Yoshiro Mori told Olympic trustees that board meetings take longer because if one woman speaks, all women feel the need to speak and that limits should be placed on female membership on the board. Speaking then the next day, the 83-year-old confirmed that he made the remarks and apologized, but public anger had been building, forcing him to resign. And this latest scandal highlights the plight of women in Japan. The World Economic Forum's gender gap report places it 121 out of 153 countries. Next, we are in Germany, where prosecutors have charged a former SS concentration camp guard with the murder of more than 3,500 people decades after World War II. The 100-year-old man is said to have knowingly and willfully aided and abetted the killings of prisoners at Sachsenhausen, just north of Berlin. The charges include involvement in the shooting of prisoners and abetting the murder with the poisonous gas Zyklon B. Due to German, Germany's privacy laws, though, prosecutors have not released the man's name. Finally, we are back here in the UK, where the coronavirus variant first found in Kent is set to become the world's dominant strain. Health officials say the mutation has already swept the UK and has been detected in more than 50 countries. And what makes this strain unique is that it's more contagious than the original virus. Detecting variants like this takes genome analysis. Currently, the UK tests between 5 to 10 percent of confirmed cases for the exact strain. They hope to eventually screen every positive test to map out all the variants in the country. Amory, this UK strain is also on its way to becoming the dominant one there in the United States as well. The good news is that health officials believe the current vaccines will still work against it. Ian Lee, thank you very much.